This video is sponsored by CapCut. This right here is proof that you're dead wrong about your art. Yup, this right here. Let me explain. This lovely journal is one of my previous sketchbooks. So let's crack this thing open and see what we got. Now as we look through these drawings, I want you to think of a number in your head. That number should be what age you think I was when I made these drawings. Go ahead, pause the video. Write it in the comments. What's your guess? I'll give you a couple seconds. No cheating. You got it? Okay, so if you guessed 11 or 12, I'm sorry, you are wrong. Did you guess 13 or 14? Sorry, also wrong. How about 15 or 16? Wrong again. When I made this art, I was between the ages of 17 and 18 years old. Let's be frank. I was pretty lousy at art. I know there's 18 year olds right now watching this video that are a hundred times better than I was at the age of 18. There's probably 13 year olds who are watching that are better than I was at 18. The art in this sketchbook makes me cringe so hard. And the same can be said for all these high school sketchbooks my mom saved in some dusty old box in her attic. But nonetheless, I filled hundreds of pages with my dumb doodles. But what do my high school sketchbooks have to do with you and your art? Well, let me reveal my thought process to you. I constantly get comments and emails from people saying, I wish I had just an ounce of your natural talent. Or hear people say, I could never get to your level. Well, I think these sketchbooks clearly show that you're wrong about that. I think that no matter where your skill level is, you can become better and even great. And the reason I think that is because that is exactly what happened to me. Look at this. This is the type of art I was making as a young adult. In my opinion, pretty bad. Probably your opinion too, but now I'm a full-time professional artist and art YouTuber. I've been making art as my main source of income for a decade, I have dozens of murals all around the world, and I've had my own solo art gallery shows and done art for huge, giant brands. Yet this was my art at 18 years old. Oh god, that's so bad. So how did I get here? How did I turn my crappy art into something, uh, slightly less crappy? Well, like a mirror staring at its own belly button. I've done some self-reflection. So let me see if I can share a few reasons I think I've made it to where I am and why I truly believe that you can too. Number one, I love it, so I do it a lot. Okay, so I promise I'm gonna be a bit more specific with my tips than hey, art is really freaking cool in just a minute, but um, Hey, art is really freaking cool. Like, I love it. It gives me a dopamine rush, making something really cool come out of my head and appear on the canvas. It gives me a sense of accomplishment and purpose. Therefore, I wanna do it all the time. Art is like a gassy pug, snoring and farting on your lap, somewhere deep down. You just gotta love it, you stinky little bastard. <laughs> If making art doesn't give you this feeling in some small way, you're gonna have a serious uphill battle. I know there's a lot of other emotions mixed in there, like fear, self-loathing, anxiety, thinking you're not good enough, worrying about not having a personal style. Why does my hand have time to change the silly hat with my decision? But somewhere in that soup of emotions, there has to be some good in there. Or quite frankly, you're just gonna quit. I try to let my love of creation be the loudest voice amongst all the negative whispers and guide me to continue making art. If you love it, if it makes you feel good, you're gonna keep doing it. When you keep doing it, you slowly but surely have to get better. Even though these high school sketchbooks are major cringe to me, they're all full. Hundreds and hundreds of pages in these books. All of them are full. I kept doing it because it made me feel good. And I keep doing it today because I love it. And it still makes me feel good. That's home base. That's ground zero. Don't forget why you're doing this and give the voice in your head cheering you on because you love it, the megaphone, so it can drown out all those other thoughts of fear and self-doubt. Trust in it and you will get better with repetition and good practice. Number two, learn some rules, then learn to break them. Guys, I'm old. When I was making these sketchbooks, internet speeds were measured in kilobytes per second, not megabytes. Or shoot, was it even kilobits? I'm not sure. When I was making these sketchbooks, I'm pretty sure we had dial-up in the house at the time. In order for me to seek out art techniques or tips or tricks, I was pretty much limited to books 
and teachers. And I went to a strange Seventh-day Adventist religious high school. Not by my own choice, but what are you gonna do? So art was not necessarily a strong suit at my high school, although I don't think that's the case for many high schools, unfortunately. So this left me with books, such as a major one for me, How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way by Stan Lee and John Buscema. Probably pronounced that wrong. Bus, Buscema, or Bus, Sema. John Basima. <laughs> An Anatomy for the Artist by Gino Barksay. <laughs> but I always much preferred drawing from my imagination, which often led to, quote, incorrect art. Stuff that had bad anatomy, bad perspective, and strange compositions. Later, as the internet developed, my art skills developed along with it. I would find amazing tutorials and guides online that would point me in the right direction, such as this tutorial on comic book coloring that was a major game changer. I also remember watching a video all about drawing hands. Learning the correct way to draw hands helped me a lot in finding my own personal style of drawing hands. I elongated the fingers and stylized them with extreme angles and gave them a bit of like an alien vibe. Learning the rules gave me a foundation where I could further experiment and find my own style. If an architect wants to create a new style of building, they still need to start with a solid foundation. But once the solid foundation is in place, they can find ways to bend and break the pre-existing norms to create something new. I still return to the most simple tutorials. It's like running a science experiment. What happens when I widen the eyes out here? Oh, interesting. Hmm, what if I push the nose way up here? Ah, how intriguing. These are all stylistic choices that can lead to a new drawing style. But knowing the rule you're breaking in the first place and thoughtfully choosing whether or not to break the rule or obey the rule leads to a much better piece of art than if you had no idea what any of the rules were in the first place and just gave it the old college try. Sir, you've been charged with 16 counts including arson, criminal racketeering, manslaughter, flying without a pilot's license, and jaywalking just to name a few. What do you have to say for yourself? Your Honor, I didn't know any of these rules, but I did my best. I practiced every day, and Lord knows, I went for it. I went for it. Ah, uh, I see. Well, in that case, not guilty. If you inject your practice with some art fundamentals, your foundation will be strong, and you can learn to bend and break the rules where you see fit to develop your own personal style. Number three, make a plan. One thing that I lacked for way too long was the patience to make a solid plan for my art. I was so excited to create that I would just go for it and I'd figure it out as I went along, right? This can sometimes lead to some interesting or even great results, but in my experience, nine times out of 10, is going to lead to a weaker piece or have you falling back on your same exact bag of tricks that you've used a hundred times before. Once I started to put a lot of thought into my original concept sketch and started working out my ideas in my sketch before I started my main piece, my artwork held so much more depth and consideration. I was able to think through the message I wanted to convey, work out my composition, change and erase weak elements, and create something much more meaningful than if I were to just dive in and freestyle my art. Yes, it does indeed take more time. And if you're like me, the sketch phase is significantly less fun than painting or working on the final piece of art, but having a solid plan can give you such a better end result. It's totally normal for me to take two or three days developing my concept art, but this gives me time to think through my ideas and work on different ways to execute them. Sometimes getting that initial spark of your idea can be such a challenge. I know so many artists who struggle so hard coming up with that initial idea. Some of the ways that I've found to jump over this hurdle is number one, using reference images sites like Pexels.com who have free images that are okay to use for commercial use. Scrolling through these beautiful photographs on this site tends to give me a lot of inspiration and kind of surprise me from where the ideas come from. Number two, I love to think about something that I like, like an item or a physical object, and then think about how I can flip it and make it into my own thing, like a s'more or a bowl of noodles or a Volkswagen van or a robot 
etc etc just think of a cool thing and say hey how can i approach this from a new direction number three i really enjoy jumping on instagram live and asking my fans to just shout out as many ideas as possible of what i should paint they have no real skin in the game and therefore no pressure to make it awesome so it seems like the ideas just flow like crazy from the community since there's zero pressure for them i screen record that live session then i write down all my favorite ideas and try to mash them up into one crazy piece that's how i made this piece and this piece and a few others and it's always super fun turn that stressful situation of coming up with an idea into something fun maybe a character generator maybe a prompt from your favorite artist don't sweat it baby you got it one of my most intense examples of having to make a plan is when i created my own version of the last supper it seems pretty simple right because i have the original as a reference already there but the concept art for this piece took well over two weeks to complete because there was all kinds of hidden codes and clues and puzzles in this artwork and the painting, along with the YouTube videos I made about the painting, were a giant online treasure hunt and ARG. There is absolutely no way I could have done this without meticulous planning, insane notes, game design, storytelling, and research. The process of coming up with that plan was a bit hellish, but in the end, it led to one of my favorite pieces I've ever made because there is just so much depth in that piece of art, and every element that appears on the canvas is filled with meaning and mystery. Be thoughtful with your art, develop a plan, put those fundamentals to work, and don't be afraid to put in the time required to make something that maximizes your artistic skills and vision. Number four, turning your art into a story. We humans love a good story. We can't help it. We evolved this way. Once upon a time, there was a giant saber-toothed tiger right behind you with huge teeth and a deep and ferocious growl. Oh, this is a good one. What happens next? Tapping into that power of story when you create your art can help you connect with your audience. Look at your latest piece of art. Does it tell a story? When you shared it with your friends, family, or online audience, did you share your process of creating it? Did you share the struggles you encountered in making the piece? What's your story? We can't help but want to know. It's in our DNA. What's DNA? Here's an example. When I work with clients and send them just a piece of concept art, there's a pretty high chance they're gonna come back to me with a lot of revisions. But if I send them the exact same piece of concept art with a short story about the meaning of each element along with my story of creating the art and my reasoning behind making the decisions that I made the client has a story to connect with and they can understand the way that I'm viewing the artwork this usually leads to fewer revisions and then down the road I'll hear them telling a co-worker about all the little details that they know about the piece of artwork when I started making YouTube videos about my artwork I would just you know put some fast motion painting footage and like a cool beat or whatever but there was no voice over there was no clips of me explaining myself and the videos performed poorly but once i worked up the nerve to start talking and sharing my story the videos slowly but surely started gaining some traction and i started to get more and more comfortable sharing the story of my art and more importantly sharing the story of myself this gave my fans something to latch on to and it gave them the ability to understand where i'm coming from and why i made the art <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. It's so crazy to have a, a little audience at the mural. But for us, it's crazy to see you. Can like, see it yeah. in real life happen. Yeah. That's so awesome. Thank you guys for freaking watching my videos and stuff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's so many powerful tools today that allow us to share our story. If you're watching this YouTube video, the chances are very high that you have everything you need to share your story. Your phone has a voice recorder, it has a camera, it has apps to edit a video, tablet or PC, even better. There's free video editing software out there like CapCut where you can make a complete video. They have tons of built-in text effects to emphasize the most important part of your story. There's auto captions to add subtitles in literally seconds. The clip arrangement and editing is super easy and you can use Use tools like auto reframe to help create different ratios for different social media platforms this software even has AI script writing to help you get started telling your story there's absolutely amazing free tools out there and the barrier to entry is so much lower than it's ever been share the story of your process and create a tutorial that others can learn from share the story of the worst mistake you've ever made with your art so others can learn and also empathize the CapCut video creating software works on Mac PC mobile tablet and on your web browser check out the links in my description to start using CapCut for free. It's never been easier to tell your story. Number five, get paid, son. Okay, this one's pretty simple. 
Finding paying jobs for your artistic skills can be important in more ways than just making money. When you take on a commission or a design gig or a mural job or any other type of hired artwork, you have a client. Working with a client or a patron can provide an extra sense of urgency, motivation, and purpose to your art. You're no longer just drawing in a sketchbook or making a painting because it looks cool and it feels good. No, no, no. Now you're living up to someone else's expectations. You're trying to balance your own creative ideas with someone else's goals. This can indeed be difficult, but it can also really push you towards planning out your work, communicating a good story, and delivering quality work. If you're very early in your art career and have never had any kind of paid gig, I think it would be a very good idea to get out there and find some come hell or high water, even if the pay is low and the job is not glamorous. I know, I know, you should never undervalue your art, and we all gotta eat, baby. But working within the constraints of helping someone else achieve their goal can lead to some good outcomes and some very important life lessons. Listen, they can be a tricky and demanding client to work with. This sucks, but it gives you experience in overcoming difficult situations and practice communicating your ideas and standing up for your artistic integrity. You may even develop some Jedi mind tricks to convince the client that your ideas were what they had in mind all along. Or they could be someone who absolutely loves everything you do and this may build your confidence. That's cool, but you better take these kind of clients with a grain of salt because they may also be someone who just straight up rips you off. This may seem like worst case scenario. Getting ripped off sucks, and I've been there way too many times. But it can teach you very quickly how to safeguard yourself against these types of people in the future and implement things like deposits and artist agreements to protect yourself from these types of people in the future. Quick tip for you, always take a deposit on the concept art phase of the project, a non-refundable deposit. If the project falls through for any reason, you keep that deposit. I can't tell you how many times I put days or even weeks into a concept for a project and then the client pulled out for one reason or another, leaving me with a piece of art I had no use for and a whole heck of a lot of wasted time. Get that deposit. For myself, at this stage of my career, I'm not really doing a lot of personal commissions anymore and I say no to most gigs, but I still have a client. In fact, I have thousands of them. My audience is my boss. I have hundreds of thousands of bosses who all have goals of being entertained or educated or inspired. Creating YouTube videos and building an audience played a huge role in my motivation to continue growing as an artist. As my audience grew and grew, so did my desire to not look like a total idiot in front of 100,000 viewers. <laughs> it supercharged my desire to get better and better and to come up with interesting ideas. That little bit of added pressure of living up to someone else's expectations can seem stressful in the moment, but it is an incredible motivator to present your best and hopefully live up to those expectations. I've taken so many low paying gigs in my career. There was a year or two where I just did everything. Logos, packaging, even painting murals of just like brand logos that were not my art at all. They just handed me their logo and said, here, paint this. This type of work put me well outside of my comfort zone and personal style, but it taught me so many lessons, especially when I got screwed over that I would have never learned on my own. And now, a decade later, I'm able to have confidence dealing with billion dollar brands and navigating difficult situations with all types of clients. It's about so much more than money. It's about the ability to communicate, collaborate, negotiate, and deliver. Number six, satisfaction is overrated. I don't know about you, but when I finish a piece of art, I can look at it for about five minutes and feel accomplished with what I've made. But then I quickly think to myself, I could do better. I should do better. I will do better. Then that fills me with a desire to start the next thing or learn a new skill or find some new inspiration. I'm not precious with my art. I'm definitely not satisfied with my art. I won't ever be the best. There's always gonna be someone better than me and I wouldn't have it any other way. I'm always looking to those who I admire and trying to slowly inch my way towards that next level. I can always be learning something new. I can always continue making art and practicing my skills. I can always be better and continue to grow. Satisfaction, overrated. I say never be satisfied. So, looking over these sketchbooks, I can see how much I've progressed. And even though they make me cringe so hard, they also make me proud. 
They make me proud to see how much I loved art way back then. They make me proud to see how many rules and fundamentals I've learned over the years, and how much practice I've put in to get to where I am. These old sketches had no plan or thought put into them before I started, and these pages show me how important that step truly is. They show me that storytelling and professional experience working with others have taken me so far. And they show me that I shouldn't be satisfied and always have a desire to continue to grow. That's why, if you think that you could never get to where I'm at or so much further beyond, you are dead wrong about your art. And this right here proves it. Thanks so much for watching my video, guys. All during the making of this video, I had the flu, so sorry about my scratchy voice. But since I had the flu and didn't really have the energy to make some crazy art project, I figured I would just take some time and reflect and hopefully share some encouragement for the creators out there watching. A gigantic thank you to the patrons whose names are scrolling by right now on the side of the screen. Love you guys. I really appreciate my Patreon supporters. You can support me on Patreon for as little as $2 a month and get early access to videos, your name in the credits, behind the scenes studio vlogs, and access to my private Discord. Alright guys, thank you so much. Subscribe. I'll catch you on the next one.